Hi piano players, Leah here from Lekele Music with a video today about Hannon exercises. I'm going to break down the first three exercises for you um, a little later on. But first of all, I want to talk a little bit about Hannon exercises in general, if you haven't come across them before. What they are, uh, whether they're worth spending time on, you know, pros and cons, because they're a little controversial. So basically, Hannon is a collection of exercises, finger drills, um, that first created in the 1870s by a French composer and piano teacher called Charles Hannon. And he made the very brave promise that a faithful execution of all 60 exercises in his book, The Virtuoso Pianist, would magically eliminate all the difficulties that pianists encounter and result in what he called a beautiful, clear, clean execution, which is the secret of all distinguished players. And in fact, the exercises have been very popular ever since, which is certainly a testament to his marketing skills, whatever else. But they are actually um, very popular. And the question is, are they any good? So there are pros and cons to the exercises. So let's get the cons out of the way first. And I can think of three main ones. Number one being that you can hurt your hands if you don't do these correctly. It's like any physical exercise. You have to be careful not to overdo things and take on too much too soon or play the exercises too often. The advice given in the book is to lift each finger as high as you can, um, but that can really encourage a piston-like movement that isn't good for the fingers, that can cause strain. Um, you really want to get a sense in anything you play of the, the fingers, hands and arms working together as a whole. Now that's not to say that everything has to be moving all the time, but just to have a more looser and more connected sense of movement, not just in the fingers. Number two is that they're, they're not very musical. They can be very mechanical uh, and therefore for some people they're just too boring to play and that's a fair criticism. Um, musical expression isn't really their aim. So yes, they can be a bit dry. There's an argument as well that just playing your scales and arpeggios is equally useful and adaptable to developing any aspects of technique that you want to focus on. So why would you bother with Hannon? Uh, number three, um, there's nothing in them that you wouldn't also learn by just playing piano repertoire. I mean, there's lots of etudes at various levels that tackle all the technical requirements a pianist needs to progress and develop. And they're much more interesting to play and are quite famous often in their own right. So think of uh, the Bergmuller etudes, you know, they're great for intermediate players, or the Chopin etudes. And if you can play those, you can play anything. But there's plenty as well for beginner players. Um, and it doesn't even have to be an etude. Anything that you work on is going to develop your technique because um, everything you work on requires one technique or another. So then on the plus side, uh, number one is that if you're careful about how you play them and you don't find them too boring, they will do what they say they're going to do. The exercises place an emphasis on developing the strength and independence of all the fingers equally. And so you'll find that they will help to make your fourth and fifth fingers uh, in particular stronger because those are our weakest fingers. And the exercises cover um, pretty much every difficulty you're going to come across when you're playing, you know, trills and tremolos and octaves, thirds, scales even. You know, they're all, they're all there. Number two is that because they're rep repetitive, they can be used to isolate particular techniques that you want to get better at, away from the added complication of learning a piece of music accurately. So for example, let's say you need to be able to play um, maybe a, a beautifully controlled, very gradual crescendo, or you need to combine playing fast but very quietly, or a staccato passage. Um, so you could basically take a hand and exercise that you're comfortable with and use it to practice that particular demand, and then transfer it back to the piece that you actually need it for. The third um, advantage is that when you're learning piano, you're, de you're developing your brain to recognize and understand patterns and movements and skills that when you learn them in one context, you can then apply more easily in another. And one of the most common problems that I see beginner adults in particular having to overcome is that is be able to coordinate the hands to play different musical patterns. So you might be able to understand intellectually what the music wants you to do. But then getting your hands to do it um, is another matter entirely. And I think actually this is where Hannon exercises are invaluable because by practicing them you're developing new neural pathways in the brain that are then available for when you're learning repertoire. So if you're coming to playing piano for the first time as an adult or you're returning to it after a long gap you have a lifetime behind you of using your hands and fingers to hold things, push things, manipulate things a bit but nothing like what's required to be able to play an instrument where every finger needs to be fully developed in terms of control and coordination and independence all, all that stuff. So for that reason, above all others, if you're in the early stages of learning piano, I think there is a lot of benefit to learning a few Hannon exercises. But I would stress taking care not to overdo it. And if you experience any pain or strain when you're doing these exercises, stop. You'll find that your hands will get tired anyway, so you won't want to feel any more discomfort than just that basic tiredness. So, OK, with all that said, here are the first three exercises to get you started. Take your time learning the patterns and particularly the fingering. So work hands separate for a while and go very slowly at first. Um, 
you know, when you start to put them hands together. And once you're confident about playing them, do use them to practice your dynamics or playing staccato or developing some speed or whatever it is you need to do. Um, some people say you should play them in different keys, but I say, well, that's what scales are for, so don't worry about that. Anyway, here they are, so enjoy. So here's the first Hannon exercise. Um, we're going to look at it in the right hand first, then the left hand, um, and we're dividing it kind of into three constituent parts as I explain it. So ascending, going up, the turnaround, and then coming back down. I'm just going to play it in one octave. You can play it in two. It's usually played in, in two octaves. Um, and the point of these exercises is to help you um, develop your finger independence, strength in your fingers and being able to play evenly um, at speed. And you take it slowly, very slowly at first, and you're always listening for the quality of the sound. So um, no sloppy work here. You want to make sure it's, it's very even um, in tone. Be um, careful about how you're placing your fingers. Try to pl place them nice and firmly, you know, uh, right firmly down into the bed of the, each note. So that's going to help you develop strength and, and evenness. So, um, looking at exercise number one, we start in a C position, but the first thing we're going to do is skip a note. So we're going from C to E. Uh, and the reason we do that with all of the hand and exercises is because we want to have motion, we want to be moving up and down. If we're just going one, two, three, four, five in one position, we're not going anywhere. So we're going from C to E. And back down, you land on the D. Skipping again, E to G, so I'm at the top of the octave here, now instead of playing the C here, here's our turnaround, I don't play the C, I go back to the G. And now my gap, my third, is at the top of my hand, so between the fourth and uh, fifth fingers. So I'm skipping the F and going from G to E. Skip. Really centering my fingers in the middle of the note. just to allow for a musical ending. Okay, in the left hand we're starting with our little finger, so we're, the, the uh, immediate gap is between our fifth and, and fourth fingers. So. Keep a nice rounded shape in your hand. And make sure you're playing on the pads of your fingers, okay? Not on the flat. I'm not going to play the C and going back to the G, skipping the F. And now our skip is between our, our thumb and our second finger, first and second fingers. together a little bit more coordination but really you're, you're thinking of the pattern rather than letting your fingers take care of themselves but just make sure that again as I said playing on the pads nice round hand shape uh, and looking for a really even tone
Hannah number two, um, a slightly different pattern. It's going to it's going to vary um, between each exercise, but you still have the gap um, between the first and second fingers or the first and second notes. So we're going from C to E, and now we're going to the top of our hand. Okay, we're going up to the little finger. So we've got a, a third and then a fourth. Okay, stepping down and then up again. Okay, so we have a little loop the loop in the middle of it. Third and then a fourth. Step down, step up, and then back down again. Skip, fourth. Take your time learning this. turn around now coming back down is slightly different it's ex actually it's, it's the exact same coming down um, in the in the first exercise we kind of reverse what we're doing but um, in the second exercise we're actually coming back down the same way so we're again we're going to have that fourth and then skip but we bring our hand in then to step up fourth so our second finger is going to play here so we get that interval of a fourth and a skip bringing our hand in a fourth a skip step up so our, our little stretches between the, our, our second and thumb there So take your time um, getting to grips with, with the, the descending passage of that exercise. It is, it is tricky, um, so slow down the video, um, allow yourself to, to really understand it and plenty of time practicing it. Um, these little patterns, as you learn them, are really helping your brain to understand the variation that you're going to be asking your, your fingers to, you know, to undertake with each piece that you play. So it's, it's really good brain training as well, sort of getting to grips with all these, these little patterns that Hannon is going to uh, give you. So in the left hand, the, uh, the fingering is a little bit different. You've got the same pattern of a skip and then a fourth, okay? But the fingering is slightly different um, to allow for comfort, really. So you're going five, three, and then you're stretching up. So the fourth is still there, but you, you've, you've got your thumb moving up a, a little bit to get to it. Up and then back down. Thumb moves up. So always thinking of the interval. stretch there between our thumb and our third because there's our interval of a fourth coming down and then our fifth is where it needs to be okay so the movement is in in the first interval you're just moving your your third over to get that interval of a fourth together so in the right hand it's going fingering is one to two and in the left hand you're going five to three 
pattern. But again, think of the interval pattern that's that's going to help you. It is important though to pay attention to the fingering and not not to um, make it up as you go along. It, it, it's it's really going to help you to stick to the fingering uh, that I give you here. stretch up a little bit here your left hand doesn't do anything at this point and then your left hand's moving up whereas your right hand has the note under the finger particular I would spend a lot of time working hands separately and when you do go to put the hands together um, really be patient take it very very slowly um, don't get frustrated if you don't manage it the first time just come back to it leave it alone come back to it, um, it, it it'll come together um, and it'll be very rewarding when it does especially when you're able to get up a bit of speed it's very fun to play when you can get put some speed up So the third exercise is very similar to the second one. It's actually a bit easier. Um, the fingering is the same, but instead of... We have a much more straightforward pattern of just up and down. the same pattern a fourth and then a third you notice your little fingers in position and your second is where you need it to be your thumb moves down hand again fingering is five three one there's your third and you're stretching up a little bit to get the fourth little finger in position five three third is in position thumb moves up fourth there that you want fifth is now in position thumb is in position third moves down together.
again, lots of patience uh, when you're uh, learning these exercises and it will pay off. Um, they really are invaluable exercises. So best of luck with them. Okay, so I hope that was useful to you. Um, let me know how you get on with these exercises or if you think they're worth doing or not. Um, if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing so you don't miss new videos. And please do hit the like button to help my videos get seen by more people. I'll see you again soon. And in the meantime, happy practicing.